Thank you very much for this kind introduction. The topic of my talk is an update on motorized spiral endoscopy. So we all know since two de decades, we have device-assisted endoscopy technique as the gold standard for the approach to the small bowel. Um, and uh, since 2001, we have balloon assisted endoscopy. It started with double balloon endoscopy in 2001 by Hiro Yamamoto and then single balloon endoscopy. Uh, and in 2008, we had then the introduction of um, the uh, manual spiral endoscopy by Paul Ackerman and his group. And manual spiral endoscopy refers to a different technical principle as it uses rotational force of a spiral over tube um, that uh, transfers the rotational force into longitudinal movement of the endoscope in reference to the small bowel wall. So we know from this meta-analysis, um, comparing balloon and manual spiral endoscopy um, of eight studies, 615 procedures, um, that we have no significant differences between both methods in, in terms of the diagnostic and therapeutic success rates, uh, death of maximum insertion, rate of complete endoscopy, and as uh, the rate of adverse events. However, we know that power, uh, um, that manual spiral endoscopy uh, was significantly um, uh, um, quicker than um, uh, balloon assisted endoscopy. Procedural time was significantly shorter. So this is a, a short video of uh, the novel power spiral endoscope. We have an uh, integrated electric motor, uh, and we have this short uh, spiral over tube that is. Um, mounted onto the insertion tube portion and uh, connected to a rotation couple that is located 40 centimeters proximal uh, of the endoscope's tip. And by uh, means of a foot pedal switch, this uh, rotation coupler and the uh, over tube can be rotated in clockwise or counterclockwise direction. And this can then be used to pleat or unpleat the small bowel onto or from the endoscope. We then performed uh, the first trial on integrated power spiral endoscopy to European centers, EVK Düsseldorf and the Erasmus University in Brussels. Uh, 132 patients were included and the primary objective was the diagnostic yield of integrated power spiral endoscopy. And these were the uh, results. Technical success rate was 97%. Uh, insertion depth beyond ligament of trites was 450 centimeters. Uh, in mean 28 uh, minutes. And if you have a look at the range of the insertion depth, zero to 600 centimeters, 600 was our definition of a total untograde endoscopy from mouth to cecum. And this was possible in more than 10% of our procedures. In terms of the primary endpoint, um, these were the results. The diagnostic yield was 74.2%. However, by intent, we did not include a control group in this trial as the first in human case, as well as the learning curve cases were also included in the study. But we then compared to the best available data from literature, and this was from this meta-analysis, including four randomized controlled trials, uh, comparing balloon and uh, spiral endoscopy. And as you can see, the diagnostic yield of uh, balloon endoscopy is 48%, and we can at least speculate that our results are not inferior to these results. The secondary outcomes were the therapeutic yield, 68%, uh, and remarkably, 100% of all attempted interventions were successful. Um, we had a, a major complication rate, serious adverse event rate of 1.5%. Two events occurred. One delayed perforation occurred two days after APC therapy in the distal ileum using power spiral endoscopy and one bleeding that required blood cell transfusion and endoscopy um, of, uh, from a laceration that was located in the GE junction. So, however, we had outstanding questions. Um, so what, um, uh, or how deep can you really go into the small bowel if this the, uh, is the primary objective using power spiral endoscopy? And as we all know that most or in most of the cases, a complete endoscopy is not only achieved from an integrated approach, but usually a bidirectional approach. Uh, we have to answer the question, um, uh, what is the true efficacy of power spiral in achieving a complete endoscopy? And this further implicates another question um, what's the true efficacy of power spiral 
um, from a retrograde approach, as we all know, that uh, for manual spiral endoscopy, the retrograde pro approach was really challenging to almost impossible. So we then conducted a second trial, again, two European centers, prospective B-centric trial, now including patients with indication for complete endoscopy. On day one, we performed an untergrade power spiral endoscopy, and on day two, if Incomplete from undergrade, we performed a retrograde power spiral endoscopy. Now the primary endpoint was a total endoscopy rate that could be achieved from undergrade alone or in a bidirectional approach. These were the results. Um, we achieved an overall total endoscopy rate of 70% uh, in this group of patients. 16.6% were complete from undergrade with reaching the cecum from. Um, and 53.4% uh, were then completed in a bidirectional approach from retrograde. Um, from a technical perspective, uh, technical success rate uh, was 100% for both undergrade and retrograde, and remarkably from retrograde 100%, and this is a clear difference to the manual spiral endoscopy. Um, to sum up this trial, um, you can see that the rate of complete um, uh, um, total endoscopy was um, superior to the, the rate that we know from the largest meta-analysis of um, double balloon endoscopy, more than 12,000 patients uh, from the first decade of double balloon endoscopy were included in this meta-analysis, 70 versus 44%. The rate of complete undergrade endoscopy was uh, tenfold higher, 16.7 versus 1.6%. And, and as already mentioned, power spiral seems to be superior to manual spiral in terms of retrograde approach. Um, in terms of safety, we had uh, no major adverse events, and most of the mild adverse events were clinically asymptomatic. However, there were limitations. Patients after major abdominal surgery or with altered anatomy were not included in this trial. Um, we uh, ha uh, also had data not only from Europe, but also from Asia. This, this uh, retrospective trial on 61 patients from the Asian Institute of Gastroenterology uh, was published last year. Technical success rate 93%, diagnostic lead 70% in this uh, um, group of the patients with mixed indications. Tech, uh, total endoscopy rate 60.6%. So the results um, are comparable to our results and can confirm our successful results. So we then uh, conducted another trial now on a more, uh, broad um, clinical basis. We um, had a prospective European multi center trial, including 10 European centers. Um, and we included centers with variable level of experience in motorized spiral endoscopy. We had um, centers with vast experience in motorized spiral and also centers that newly started with motorized spiral endoscopy. We included almost 300 patients. Uh, and um, you can see that we um, therefore divided up the, the enrollment phase into a training phase for the centers uh, that included uh, that newly started with motor spiral endoscopy. Five cases were uh, training uh, uh, patients for each individual endoscopist, and then inclusion into the core analysis group um, uh, of centers after the training phase. So um, almost 300 patients, uh, 337 procedures were included, and 80.9% um, uh, had uh, previous uh, positive findings in previous imaging. Um, and after half-time enrollment in the uh, core study phase, inclusion of patients after major abdominal surgery and uh, with surgically altered anatomy was possible. 21% after previous um, uh, abdominal major surgery and 10% had surgically altered anatomy. So these were the results as um, uh, we introduced a new technology in a broad clinical um, practice uh, safety was a, a very important endpoint and was therefore chosen as a primary outcome of our study. As you can see, the overall rate of serious adverse events went, uh, was 2.3%. And um, this was significant because uh, also the upper limit of the 95% confidence interval was far below the 8% threshold of SAE rate that was uh, that is proposed by the current um, European ESGE guideline 
um, for um, uh, deep endroscopy in the core phase. Without training phase cases, it was only 2%. Uh, however, in the training phase, it was 4.3. Two, um, two events occurred. This was not significant, but was also limited by the small number of patients. Remarkably, um, the SAE rate in post-surgical anatomy patients was not increased with 1.9%, and inter interventional procedures had an rate of 3.3% that was not significantly increased. So um, on a procedural basis, um, the um, procedure success rate that was defined as reaching the anatomical region of interest was 88%. Uh, and um, remarkably, in more than half of the patients that were planned for total endroscopy, uh, this uh, could be achieved in our trial. So uh, last not least, we have first data on motorized thyroendroscopy in patients um, uh, for um, uh, for ESCP in patients after um, um, or in altered anatomy, and uh, we were able to publish this first case last year in video GIE um, uh, motorized thyroendroscopy assisted ESCP after run wire reconstructive surgery, and. Uh, I can uh, would like to show you a short video. You can see here the stricture of the bioenteric anastomosis. Um, so the, the stomach and the pylorus were still in place. You, you pass then the pylorus with the, uh, the tip of the spiral enteroscope. You need to push a little bit forward this then uh, to, to let the spiral engage the pylorus and pass the pylorus. And this usually leads to loop formation in the stomach. We jump a little bit forward, more loop formation. You uh, have to uh, um, uh, wait for some time, let the spiral drill through the pylorus. And then I usually um, uh, straighten the scope, pull back the scope while maintaining forward rotation. And this then leads to further uh, forward movement. Now we straighten the scope. You can see the sc uh, scope is in a straight position. Here is the spiral. Um, it is located here, and then the real pleating of the small bowel occurs. Uh, so I jump a little bit forward, then we pass, after passing ligament trites, then really effective pleating of the small bowel can be, can be seen. We reach the, the deep ruin Y anastomosis, then we have to identify the hepatobiliary limb, intubate the hepatobiliary limb, and then use uh, spiral rotation to pass the hepatobiliary limb and then advance to the bilioenteric anastomosis. So uh, this is uh, um, uh, uh, here very quick and easy. So then we reach the bilioenteric anastomosis. Uh, I usually use a transparent cap to facilitate a good overview, a stable position in front of the papilla or the anastomosis, and then you can use standard instruments um, some length instruments to perform your therapy, like in this case, balloon dilatation. So we have now submitted our first retrospective series of 36 cases, um, uh, 35 of which had a biliary indication for uh, ERCP. Um, type of surgical reconstruction construction was 30, and uh, 30 cases with through on Y um, anatomy and three with uh, six with burial uh, two. Technical success rate were 86% for endroscopy, 83% for cannulation, and 100% for the interventions. And the most important outcome is usually the overall success rate. Sorry, the overall success rate on an intention to treat basis, and this was 72.2%. Uh, mean procedural time was 69 minutes. 5.6% adverse event rate, one of which was serious as we had a um, delayed um, post sphincterotomy bleeding after reintroduction of oral anticoagulation that required surgery during the night. However, we had very promising results. So I would like to sum up now. Motorized spiroendroscopy represents a disruptive new technology. It's the first active endoscope that has been evaluated in these large prospective clinical trials. Uh, it seems to be safe and effective for deep endroscopy from undergrade and retrograde. It's feasible and safe for post-surgical and acid anatomy patients. We have now first promising data for motorized bowel endroscopy-assisted ESCP. And um, 
we think uh, it has the potential to change the diagnostic and therapeutic algorithm to small bowel diseases in the near future. However, there's a um, uh, need for further careful evaluation, especially in comparative trials and in patients with altered anatomy and for biliopancreatic interventions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm very much looking forward to your questions.